20 million years ago, cataclysmic eruptions began to form Iceland on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, where Europe and America's tectonic plates diverge, creating a hot spot in the Earth's crust. Iceland is situated between 63 and 66 degrees north, 200 kilometers from Greenland's coast, making it one of the most northernmost inhabited lands on the Earth and one of the most inhospitable habitats in the world. These characteristics define the character of this island, where fire and ice have given birth to a colossal scenery. The seas surrounding Iceland are also like the mainland, savage and unyielding. Unyielding like the handful of Norwegian Vikings who came here in the year 874 and named it Land of Ice. For thousands of Scandinavians who subsequently arrived, life was closer to hell than to paradise. Iceland is a volcanic desert, sterile and covered with glaciers. The geothermic phenomena are present everywhere. The overheated sludge pits and sulfur trials of Namanjal, some 30 active volcanoes, and last but not least, the famous geysers. This volcanic activity has been a constant cause of catastrophes, as it was in 1783. It began with an earthquake. Suddenly, the Icelanders believed that hell had come to Earth. After a powerful explosion starting from the Lackey volcano, a 30 kilometers rift opened. 110 volcanoes began to spew lava fountains 1,400 meters high. This lava flow, the greatest in history, covered 550 square kilometers, destroying everything in its path. An estimated 122 million tons of gas and ash were emitted by these infernal mouths. A northwest wind brought these toxic red clouds directly towards Europe. Finally, the whole northern hemisphere was covered with this toxic gas and ash. For Iceland, the consequences were catastrophic. The ground was contaminated and the harvest destroyed. 25% of Icelanders were poisoned or died of starvation. Eighty percent of the livestock and wild animals were decimated. In France, a significant increase in mortality was observed, and in Great Britain, 25,000 people died in August and September of 1783. This event was recounted by French scientist Giro Sulavie. He wrote, This red smog is motionless and continually sticking to the ground. Everywhere the sun has the color of a red cannonball. Many people having seen this red sun believed it was the moon. Everywhere terrible thunderstorms are bursting. The rain, wind, and hail are wreaking havoc throughout France. The cornfields and other foodstuffs have been completely destroyed by the hailstorms. The country is in extreme misery, and in addition to these calamities, the winter has been the harshest we have ever known. The consequences of this eruption 
was an increasing of the little glacial age which began in the 16th century. With winter so cold that the crows were freezing in mid-flight. These exceptional climate conditions contributed to extreme poverty and famine in France. The rebellion long brooding exploded. The 14th of July, 1789, the Bastille was stormed by rebels. The French Revolution had begun. When Louis XVI was killed on Revolution Square, the 21st of January, 1793, he could never have imagined that a volcano eruption on Iceland 10 years earlier was a contributing factor to losing his head. In our modern times, where everything seems possible to mankind, the lackey eruption was an important lesson in humility. The monster who is still there, sleeping in the extreme north, could awaken at any moment and revive the nightmare of 1783. The traces of this catastrophe are everywhere. Immense lava fields on which no vegetation has been able to grow for hundreds of years. Since the populating of Iceland in 900 AD, these calamities have claimed a great number of victims. This is partly why Iceland, whose area is almost equal to England, only has 350,000 inhabitants. But the Icelanders, who have lived in turf houses up to 1930, have developed a modern society. They have almost succeeded in harnessing the geothermal energy using the hot water springs for domestic heating, for therapeutic purposes, and electric power generation. Iceland has only one tarmac road outside the built-up areas. The Route 1, which runs 1,339 kilometers around the country and which was completed in 1974. Other roads are like this, or worse, like this. Here, tourism is rather adventurous. To discover the most extraordinary scenery, the visitor must earn it through challenging treks in mountains or in volcanic deserts. <laughs> Winter is one of the main factors which has carved the Iceland's landscape. It often lasts more than six months and has created great glaciers on the highest points of the land. Vat Nargikul, Europe's largest glacier measuring 8,000 square kilometers, is hurling huge icebergs down to the Jokulsarlan Lagoon. This lagoon is connected to the sea.
These glaciers created numerous rivers which carved their way through hilly landscapes and from extraordinary canyons with enormous roaring waterfalls. Every waterfall has a history, like Godafas, where in 1000 AD, the Viking chief Thorgeir threw the pagan idols when he converted to Christianity, and with him, all of Iceland. Or the Skogafoss Fall, beneath which the Viking Drazi Dorlsson would have hidden his fabulous treasures. Iceland's greatest waterfalls are also the most important in Europe. Gullfoss, whose flow can reach up to 2,000 cubic meters per second, which is almost three times that of Paris' Seine River. Getifoss, the most powerful in Europe, 44 meters high, 100 meters wide and carrying more than 500,000 tons of gravels and rocks per year. Iceland can also be romantic, like here in Eriksstadir, the valley where Eric the Red lived in a turf house like this one. This Viking left Iceland in 986 AD on his longship and discovered Greenland with his son Leifur, who continued up to the American continent long before Christopher Columbus. Kirkjufell, the church mountain, which according to local legend was a natural cathedral where the elves would come to pray, in Pingvalir where you can see the continental rift above ground and where the first Viking chiefs organized the world's first parliament in 930 AD. Iceland is also mysterious and fascinating, with dreamlike sceneries. It places the visitor in a mineral world, subject to superhuman forces, and almost unchanged since the great eruptions which formed it 20 million years ago. Nevertheless, besides the geothermic hell, this island has also many wonderful landscapes, leaving the visitor breathless. And the adventurers will be rewarded for their efforts. Discovering Iceland, one understands why most of its inhabitants consider it as the true heaven on Earth.